see 10 or 20 gallon aquarium and you're not sure what to put in it, you've got to add some bottom dollars that will keep your gravel spick and span. Hi, I'm Irene with Aquarium Co-op, and of course I had to start off our list with the friendliest, most peaceful community fish bottom dollar there is, Cory Doris Catfish. And my personal favorite is actually the albino Cory, just because they have that really unique iridescent pink color with the armored scales. I love how they like to wink at you every once in a while. And then plus you'll always find them kind of shuffling around the ground looking for food to eat, using their barbels to smell out for food. Now you may see on the internet some controversy on what is the right substrate to keep Cory's on, and usually people suggest sand because it won't quote unquote cut into their barbels. However, our founder Corey actually did a fish collection trip down in South America and he found Corey catfish on what would be considered very, very sharp gravel. So don't freak out just because you don't have the quote unquote correct substrate that you see on the internet. Another reason why I specifically like to recommend the albino Corydoras to beginners is because they're very outgoing compared to some of the other Corys I've kept, and they're very, very easy to breed. All you need is a group of six of them or more, and they'll have constant activity in your aquarium. Just as a reminder, all bottom dollars, including the ones on this list, they do need to specifically be fed fish food. You can't just expect them to live on crumbs. So Corydoras, they love eating worms of all kinds. They'll eat, they're not really picky. So live, frozen, prepared wafers, sinking foods, and rapashi gel food is definitely one of their favorites. Another one of my favorite, favorite bottom dollars is the Coolie Loach. They are these, this, this unusual oddball fish that kind of looks like a four inch miniature eel with vertical banding that alternates between kind of a tan yellow color to a dark brown black. And there's many different species too. You can get the all black version, there's a silver kind and other species that have different striping patterns on them. They are a nocturnal fish, which means they love to hide in things like, you know, coconut huts or underneath your plant roots and any kind of nook and cranny there is. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you have a semi-aggressive fish like a betta fish. They actually go really well with them because they always stay out of the betta's way. Similar to the Cory catfish, you're gonna want a school of them, so get at least three to six of them. They are a great bottom dweller that, again, likes to scavenge on the bottom, but you want to specifically feed them sinking at community foods. They don't really eat algae as much for a cleanup crew, as well as compared to some of the other loaches that have sharper faces, coolie loaches won't go after your snails. I'd say they are very beginner friendly because of how hardy they are. If you haven't heard Master Breeder Dean's story about one time he was taking down this aquarium and he like kind of got, you know, busy with other stuff and he left like an inch of water left in it and never really dealt with it. And then a year later, he finally went to fully take it down and found one coolie loach left that was completely like healthy and fine and had been eating, you know, I guess the microfauna that was living among the mold. So very good fish, uh, especially if you don't necessarily know what you're doing. The Epistogramma. This is a South American dwarf cichlid that comes in many, many colorful species. Probably one of the more common ones would be the Epistogramma cockatoides. It's got this like spiky dorsal fin that's very bright red or bright orange, depending on the variety, as well as a bold horizontal black stripe on it. It's not technically a nano fish because the males often get to, let's say three to three and a half inches versus the females are two to two and a half. But I personally have often kept them in 20 gallon community aquariums, as well as Master Breeder Dean recommends a 10 gallon breeding tank if you're gonna just do a pair of them. You're gonna wanna keep that water slightly warmer around 80 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as if you can, neutral to mildly acidic water, and then condition them for breeding by feeding lots of things like tube effects worms and live baby brine shrimp. And then if you wanna see some really cool parental care, then go ahead and add an Episto cave in there and you will see the female lingering around in the caves, guarding the eggs and eventually the fry when they hatch out, while the male kind of patrols the whole area, guarding the whole territory, especially if he has like a harem of multiple females that he's mated with. A lot of people who aren't even in the hobby have heard of plecos or plecostomus catfish, also known as like maybe sucker mouth catfish or algae eaters. They can get pretty big, especially if you get like the common pleco, but I personally like the really small clown pleco, which gets to about, I don't know, a little over three inches long, has this very striking brown and orange kind of stripes on it. Not that I would know because definitely, you know, I knowingly went into the fish store and the employee told me best algae eater ever that they never see. So, and I would agree. <laughs> Mine typically hides around the, 
I would say sponge filter and the heater near the back, but anytime I feed like her favorite sinking wafers, maybe uh, canned green beans or pashi gel food, she does come up to the front even if it's daytime. They are known to be a wood eating catfish. So I've put things like chola wood or softer driftwoods for her to munch on, but I've actually never seen her eating on it. Could be happening at night, but I think she just prefers to feast on the rapashi gel food instead. Now I've seen a lot of common names floating around on the internet and at fish stores, but I personally call this the blue neon stiffidon gobi. Stiffidon gobies, there's many, many species that come from Asia and Oceania. The blue neon one that I have, they get about, eh, you know, two inches. They have a really skinny kind of grayish body with a blue neon stripe down the side. Although the one that I think is a female has, it looks kind of more like a bronze coppery stripe instead. I wasn't sure if I should include it on the bottom dweller list because yes, they are at the bottom of the tank a lot, but also equally they, I see them hanging on the side of the glass or grazing on, you know, leaf surfaces a lot, which is not necessarily always on the ground. It's just another really cool algae eater slash off wax grazer, which means off wax is kind of referring to the slimy layer of biofilm slash algae that grows on the surfaces of underwater things. Now, because they are off walks grazers, they're not the fastest eaters. So I wouldn't pair them with a ton of speedy swimmers that are just gonna gobble up everything before your Stiffidon Gobi can get around to it. Mine personally really, really like Rapashi Soylent Green. That's the main food I see them eating, but I personally put them in a mature aquarium that has lots of mulm and algae and microfauna goodies for them to graze on. And they seem really fat and happy. Of course, if you think these fish are too small for you, Corey's got a great list of bigger bottom dollars that might pique your interest. So check it out and enjoy nature daily.